Welcome back to the Debut Theater One Act Showcase. The three short plays you're about to see in our Blue Showcase focus on basically nice people who face a frightening plunge if they can't rediscover what it is that they actually want from life. First, in Succotash, two struggling artists have the chance to help each other as long as they put their whole heart in what they're doing. Next, in Today of All Days, two women who've never met dangle together, literally over a void from which there's no coming back. And finally, in uh, Happy Anniversary, a couple does get the chance to redo life as long as they're willing to take that chance. Watch and enjoy, and uh, keep your eye open for the purple showcase coming soon, and for the blue and the yellow still there for you to watch. Okay. Curtain. What's the matter? Eat! What is it? It's food? Stop looking at it like it's gonna crawl off the plate toward you. Yeah, but what's this yellow stuff? Rutabaga? You never had rutabaga? No. What's with all these colors every night? Red, orange. Bull's blood beets. Thumbelina carrots. Colors are good for you. Don't you know anything? And all this from that little garden in the back. What's the green stuff? Oh, for God's sake, okra. Just don't eat too much. You'll be in the bathroom. Ah, the bathroom. What's the matter? Not clean enough? That bathtub, you, those stains are permanent. You know, long before my time. What? I'm sorry, I can't let you clean my bathroom anymore. I, I, I can't let you clean anything for me. Why not? I don't need a cleaning woman anymore. <laughs> You're firing me? Don't put it that way. Letting you go, that sounds nicer. Just like that, because of the damn bathtub. Not the bathtub. Look, this story of yours you gave me to read, I read it. Finally, but, but I didn't bug you, right? I asked you once, and then I just waited. Three goddamn months, I waited. Well, I was busy, but right, you didn't bug me. You should have bugged me. I thought it was gonna be a piece of amateurish. It's great. Great? More than great. Okay, the voice, I'm here, and the story is here, and there's no layer in between. Like, how do you do it? Even the greatest writers have a layer in between. How? I, I, I don't know. I, I just do it. You just do it. That scene in the supermarket, the items going under the scanner, the fly buzzing in circles, the planes of the customer's face, that rhythm you get of the sounds and the names of the things and the visuals. Yeah. Did you work a year as a supermarket cashier just to get ready for this masterpiece? Only a week. I got fired. That's why you can't fire me, because I'm always getting fired. I get too distracted easily. I, I pay attention to everything. Please don't fire me. I like it here. Look, I'm the guy who's supposed to be a writer. That last book of mine, it made a disgusting amount of money. And I can't do what you do. You are a writer. You won a National Book Award. Don't say supposed to be. Just tell me all the stuff in your story. What happens to the customer guy after he leaves the store? The dead raccoon he passes driving home. The stomach ache and the desolate dream he winds up having that night. Where did you get that from? from you. All right. 
look, it's time to stop being mysterious. Not in a million years could I have written anything as goddamn sensitive and lyrical as that. You can look in every notebook in this house, a murdered girl's corpse on the road. Yeah, a dream that kills a guy in his bed. Sure, I got a National Book Award for shocking the hell out of people eloquently. You didn't get your stuff from me. Don't you remember? You came to my register that one time. No? Well, I remember. You recognized me from my jacket photo? Mm, I just watched you. The way you looked at the items one by one. The haagen and the ring-dings, and at the display screen, and at your cell phone. Never at me. Oh. And then after you paid, you, you stopped at the bulletin board and you wrote on that little post-it card. I watched that too. Okay, and? I went and took it. House cleaner wanted. You took it, why? Cause I gave you the wrong change. I undercharged you by mistake. Yeah, why not just run after me in the parking lot? Cause I didn't realize till later when I cashed out. And then they told me I had to make up for the shortfall from my pay, which left me with 84 cents for a whole day's work. Couldn't even eat, cause that was happening almost every day. Oh, for God's sake. And then they fired you? Well, you should have quit with the money in your pocket. Mm, I needed the job. They had me both ways. Anyway, that's when I took the post-it note on the way out. And you called my number and you came. To do what? Get your money back? Steal something? Apologize for that, you. I apologize. And eat some rutabaga. Bad enough that you insult me, but you insult a vegetable when you just poke at it. I'm eating mine while it's still hot. Put some succotash on your plate. What are you waiting for? I don't think I like succotash, except the word. It means broken in pieces, you know, in, in Narragansett. Yeah, yeah, just, just eat some. Mine's got hominy in it. Ooh, another nice word. Okay, so you came here three months back not knowing who I was. Oh, I thought maybe I saw you on television one time. After we talked in the doorway, I mean. The only thing is... What? Well, somebody rich and famous wouldn't be living in a pigsty. That thought was tiptoeing around my mind. Ha ha. A piece is still missing here. Come on, at what point did you get designs on me? I have no designs. You planted a garden in the back. That's a design, isn't it? If you consider a rectangle a design, where do you live? You never told me. Here. Now. How here, at dark, you leave, right? I sneak back. I've got my bed in the garage, behind the riding mower. With the mice? No. There's a stray cat that lives there now. You gotta have pets. The more, the better. How do you write, with nothing living around you but you? I write with a cat right on my lap. Okay, let me think. You clean, you do my wash, and now you're even cooking, all on your own, little by little. What do you get out of this besides meals? My pay, don't forget. Yeah, yeah, your pay. But what's the design? I want to write. I want to be a writer. Yeah, okay. I figure you'll teach me. It's what I wanted to do all my life. <laughs> I couldn't teach anybody. You're already better than me. No, no, you, you gotta tell me what I'm doing wrong because no one wants to print what I send them. Oh, and you want me to tell you why? That's easy. The sensibility, it's out of phase. Come on, come on, detail. 
you're too goddamn positive. Everywhere that voice of yours glides, it settles on the beauty of things, whether it's an old hag or rutabaga. And what's wrong with that? Let me give you a few words. Despair, degeneration, depression, depersonalization. They all start with D. Good, good, that's our time. The age of the devolving de world. You want the secret to success? Write ugly for an ugly world. The world's not ugly to me. It's got a zillion magical things in it. <laughs> magical. Look, change your sensibility. That's my advice. Just don't change your voice because it's as natural as a leaf on a tree. I can't change my sensibility. Sure you can. I did. You did not. I did. I was once a guy who watched Frank Capra movies. I wrote love stories that I actually meant. What happened? A friend got me into McDowell. I got laughed at there by some very smart people, and it cured me good. Okay, what's McDowell? It's an artist colony, New Hampshire. You want to go there? I could probably get you in. You can make connections if you want a publisher. What exactly do you do there? You hunker in your little cabin and pretend you're working. Eat meals with a bunch of egotists, have sex with at least one other egotist, and come home and soak around your house alone for the next year or two because you've wrecked your marriage. Mm. I don't have a marriage. And I don't want to go anywhere to be laughed at. Smart people can go to hell. And forget a career in this business. Business? Yes, business, damn it. How's writing a business? How's the word career go in the same sentence with writing? Look, Miss Sunshine, how do you think the mortgage here gets paid? How does your miserable salary get paid? Don't pay a salary then. I'll do without it. Great answer for everything you have. I mean it. I, I don't want money to touch my writing. I just want people to touch it. Oh. Whatever you say. Listen, I got my own troubles. You know what happens to someone who wins a National Book Award? His next novel's a flop. Nine times out of ten, and then, and then, he's through. Maybe you shouldn't do exactly what you did the first time. Maybe this time, don't start with an actual grisly tabloid murder case. No, no. That's the whole secret. Actual, grisly, purposeless, disgusting murder is the secret to the sales. And then the sickening inner workings of the murderer's mind, which I invent. Wait a second. Have you been reading my manuscripts? Uh, how am I going to clean without looking at things? I told you, I look at everything around me. Do not tell anyone. Do not tell anyone I'm stuck. Who am I going to tell? How'd you get yourself cornered? I'm not. Not cornered. Oh, all right. Why do you write, then? Why do you write at all? Why are you sitting at the computer all day? What part of it makes you happy? Oh, please don't bring the word happy into this. Writing makes you happy? If a thing doesn't make me happy, I don't do it. I, I like tending a garden. I like singing in my church. It brings a joy straight through me. Otherwise, why do it? Singing, okay. That makes sense. That's whatever, an instinctive act. There, now we got it. You, you can't sing ugly, it, it just doesn't work. Same with a vegetable. If you don't care about it, it isn't gonna grow for you. You find a pleasure in everything? In working at the supermarket? All you need is one piece to start. One ingredient that you love. Oh, love. Now you said love. What's wrong with love? You love cleaning this house for me. Yes. You love me. 
Yes. You, you love rutabaga. I like rutabaga. I love succotash. Oh, boy, we're headed for some big trouble here. Yes. You sure you want to go this way? Too late. Hey, what do you think's going to happen after three months? Put beauty together with the beast for three months? Stuff happens. What the hell? I'm the beast? Yeah, you like to tear little animals apart with your teeth. Admit it. There's a handsome prince inside, though, right? No. I like the story with the beast just being a beast. I can make the world with my own eye. Thank you. <laughs> you are... What? I, I don't know. I'm, um, stuck. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Right now, at this moment, the beast has no love in him? Well, I, I can't deny that you're, you're pretty. I know. I see you look at me. More and more, ever since I first stepped through that door. You think I didn't notice that little click? <sighs> okay. I felt something as soon as you started talking. I, I, I said to myself, what the hell? There! Don't fight that! And then? I turned back to the book I'm writing because the other thing eventually collapses into a pile of dog squat. But a cleaning woman, okay. I'm not gonna call you a condescending idiot at this moment. The book collapses into a pile of dog squat when there's no pleasure in it. The other thing's alive. It'll grow around that numb skull of yours. Oh, first I'm a beast, then an idiot, now a numb skull. That's why you want to fire me, isn't it? It's easier than a breakup. You're looking at me and you're scared. <laughs> if you're such a big, bold thing, why are you sleeping behind somebody's riding mower all this time? I'm not a big, bold thing. I'm just a plain old wannabe writer with a stupid need to please people. Keeping that numb skull of yours that I could have been writing instead of cooking that food for you, which is now getting cold. Okay. You know what? I only talked about firing you. I wouldn't. I couldn't. It was, um, chagrin. Because deep down, I thought you belonged somewhere better than with second rate. Don't call yourself second rate. I happen to like you. You have no idea, no idea how weird I am. I curse at my computer screen sometimes as if it was alive. I hardly sleep at night. I sit up in bed and talk to myself out loud, waiting for one of my characters to talk back to me, praying that they'll talk back to me. Well, I do that sometimes too. No big deal. Don't argue with me now. I like you. Okay. Why? Because you're not full of yourself. And you're generous. And inside that grumpy shell, you're basically well-meaning. When you're not stuck in a corner somewhere. I'll take it. Best I've had in a while. I don't know a thing about you. I, I come from a big family. They fight, they have fun, they love each other. And they all talk loud, except for me. Mm, that's it. That's my whole story. Nobody loves anybody in my family. Nobody cooked anything for anybody. No? What'd you live on? Ice cream. Ring dings you saw. Well, you're gonna die if you don't eat some vegetables, finally. Think about me now. Who actually cares? Take some succotash! I like the corn. 
not the lima beans. Yeah, yeah, it, it figures. It's in pieces, and so are you. So start with the part you like, but I'm telling you, it's the combination that makes it. Nice phrase. Very nice. I'll put it in my book, which I now have to start over from scratch, thanks to you. Uh, not now. Start tomorrow. <laughs> so what's the deal? I, I spilled myself, right? Did you mean it about not firing me? Yeah. Don't sleep in the damn garage anymore. Get your stuff. Can I bring the cat inside too? I guess so. Tell me. What? Is it too late to plant flowers out there? Because I like flowers more than I like vegetables. Too late? Are you kidding? Marigold, zinnias, black-eyed Susans, asters. Okay. okay, good enough. I'm feeling better now. Good. Are we done? Can we eat now? <laughs> done. Done. You are funny, you. Done. Not in a million years. Done. For God's sake, give me a break, no! Easy, dear. We're stuck. I know. <laughs> this is so damn stupid. I cannot be late, no, not today, of all days. Ah, that's how it works, of all days, yes. Well, me too, of all days. You don't have Granville to deal with. Unless you do, <laughs> are you with Granville's party? You that Annie always talks about, the one with the... Modigliani is all over her apartment. It's, oh, who's Modigliani? Who's Granville? Good. Overrated anyway. Red button, right? Oh, easy, my ears. <laughs> you want to just sit here, stuck in between floors 33 and 34? No hurry for me, except my ankles are sore from the damn sidewalk. Well, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, it's me. Guess what? I'm stuck in the elevator. I know that there's eight elevators. What good does it do me? Look, have another cocktail. Well, tell your parents they can have another cocktail too, can't they? Just, 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 just tell them I'm sorry and I'm coming. And call the damn maintenance department. He wasn't nice about it. Granville is never nice when it comes to punctuality. His whole damn family has a clock fixation. Pretty dress there. Special occasion up there in the whatchamacallit, the stratosphere room. The rainbow room. Oh yeah, and his parents too, hmm? He's giving me the ring tonight. Heirloom engagement ring. Meet the family, big event. Big disaster, you mean? What are you talking about? Disaster? Stars in the wrong place. That's why I got into this iron box here with you. Boy, a nut job. It's bad enough I gotta pee. Oh, you should always pee before you get into an elevator. Weren't you taught? Oh, ow. So you got into this box with me? What are you doing, following me? You want something? Hey, I was minding my own business. You came barreling past me on the sidewalk with trouble just dripping out of you. I was trying to be on time. That's trouble? Yes. If you add in those ridiculous high heels and that over-padded bra. What are you talking about? This is me in here. Yeah, you. And that nose. What's wrong with my nose? It's not yours. You let people cut your face. Why? 
What's wrong with the nose you got from your mother that she got from her mother? I didn't like it. How do you know this isn't my nose? No one's supposed to know. I paid big time for this. I saved up two years. The guys who did this job did Cher's nose. <laughs> That's a long time back. They maybe got shaky hands by now. You just want to undermine my confidence, is that it? Yes. Your mother didn't take offense that you cut off the family nose? My mother's not around anymore, and not her mother either. Look, how's my nose any of your business? Sorry. I couldn't let a young one like you walk past me that unhappy. Not today. One, I'm not unhappy. Two, so I'm unhappy. What's it to you? I had a daughter who was unhappy. One out of six. One unhappy daughter who overdid things. Ugh. Better I don't talk about it. You have six children? Six daughters. Two sons. <laughs> that's eight. Right, eight. And that's not overdoing things to your mind? They all grew up happy. Well, all but one. My mother had 10. My husband, his mother had 12. He and I compromised. 11 would be a compromise. Well, let's not kill me. I'm already sore in the legs here with these varicose veins. Tell me, did that nose of yours get you that Granville guy upstairs? To put it simply as possible, yes. I knew it. Where? A ball at the plaza. A ball at the pier. Ha! Yeah, sucker. Oh, neckline down to here, I suppose. Neckline down to here. <laughs> All men are suckers, though. Right. I meant you, sucker. How's the bladder? Want to just squat down right now and get it over with? No. Are you hungry? I got a picnic in here. Eggplant sandwich? They'll get us unstuck. You know how long it takes for the average stuck elevator to get unstuck? 15 minutes. You know how much stretch there is in standard elevator cable rope? Two inches per 100 feet. For eight trans traction, it's two and a half. Now, how do you know numbers like that? I work for an insurance company and we do liability. I like the numbers, they help with my insomnia. Hmm, what's the longest anyone was ever stuck in an elevator? What's that number? 41 hours, but that's before cell phones, naturally. 41 hours. My first labor was 41 hours. Oh, I swore that I would not... Well, never mind what I swore. Know what the odds are of an elevator getting stuck? One in every 100,000 rides. <laughs> you know what causes the problem 98% of the time? Overload. Well, it's only you and me. Okay, something caused it. What? I caused it. Oh, God, help me. Oh, never mind God. I'm helping you. And let me tell you, it's not easy bringing a thing this heavy to a stop. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm still here. Where the hell else would I be? So it's seven and a half past the hour, and? Well, you tell them to be patient. Tell your dad to take your mom dancing on the dance floor. The orchestra's playing. I can hear them. If she gets dizzy, tell her to close her eyes. I'm the one with the problem here. I'm stuck in a goddamn elevator with a lunatic. Call the maintenance department. That's what you can do. I... <sighs> the dance floor rotates. Big, stupid catastrophe. Spoiled, self-absorbed woman. The, the whole goddamn planet rotates, doesn't it? I am not a lunatic. What do you want from me? I want you to go down to the sidewalk and keep walking. <laughs> yeah? Where? Back to the guy who actually loves you. You know, the one you turned away to get yourself this little boy upstairs? Now, how do you know stuff about me? 
there's laws, you know, about stalking someone. I raised eight kids, remember? I read you just like I read a book, dear. Never saw a young woman more divided. That's why this elevator's stuck. I stopped it, and you have no idea how to start it up again. Oh, don't push that button again, please. Here's my little input. The part of you that's pulling down is heavier. The guy I turned away has no money. Is that in the book? He will never have money, and money's heavy. No money at all? He spent what he had on a piece of land in South Hold. He's planting fig trees. Figs are good. Sounds like the guy's got his head on. Oh, he's intelligent. Can look into your eyes and see right into you. If something's hurting you, he knows it before you do. <laughs> so, what's the problem? Look, the guy's terrific. Great guy. But... Where do you hide? From what? Yourself? What are you, afraid of being happy? I'm afraid of falling. Well, falling is scary. Scariest thing in life. Right. I'd rather be with a man who's weak. It's easier. <laughs> it only looks easier. You want to waste years finding out? Well, you don't have to listen to me, but the fig man would have loved you just as much with your other nose. I'll bet anything. And I'll bet he's waiting. So what? Look, the guy up there has a 12-room apartment on Riverside Drive and a 22-room mansion in Lloyd's Neck. Don't embarrass me now with your numbers. Don't embarrass yourself. Hey. His family owns a railroad. Is that embarrassing? They care if you're on time. All this other stuff we're talking about is just silliness to them. Mm. Trains. Hmm. I liked a good train ride when I was a kid. But figs. My people had fig trees, you know, back in Sicily. There. There what? Direction. Pay attention to direction. You want me to go down to the sidewalk and aim myself backwards? What, should I just walk in reverse and crawl back into my mother? I love that. Listen to you. A woman has to know exactly who she is these days. Has to see it far ahead. Listen, my mother used to have this picture on her bedroom wall. I have it now. It's my great-grandmother curly-haired teenage girl wearing a shawl who got on a boat all alone and landed here. You know why? Poor, no choice, forced into the smelly bottom of a ship. Wrong. Necessity, you getting me? Those human waves at Ellis Island, they got sucked in there by the tide. Iron and brick, tough story but all about direction. Get here, work, move up. Get it? Up, up. Wrong. On the top of this brick pile is not up. It is. I studied all this. I graduated Wellesley College, you know, scholarship. <laughs> Get treated good there? Good. You want to hear a story of humiliation that will shrivel your hair? Not the big showy kind, the quiet kind that puts real shame in you? Ah, uh, I knew there had to be a wound way down in there. That's why you talk about hiding. Hey, everyone hides something. The bottom line is, I survive. <laughs> bent. You survived bent. Okay, I'm bent. A couple of those stupid snobs out there are bent, too. I can pop someone right in the nose if I have to. And meanwhile, I learned how the system works. Yes, I know you're going to marry a railroad. But let me fix one little thing in you that's still crooked. My nonna came here, too. Raised the children in the brick boxes like everyone else. Ice box, kitchen bathtub, clothesline out the window. The world without a sky, she called it. 
She wanted to come, though. Not necessity. It's, it's what you got backward. Well, maybe she wanted to. Not just her. Forget what people told you who never saw. Where my nunna left from is beautiful. She told me. Mountains, lemon groves, the sea. Left there to stretch herself. To marry for love. To make something from her life. Hope she brought with her. Guts. Only one thing she ever cried over. What? Ugly here. All paved over. No warm dirt under her feet. No scent from the trees. No chicks in the spring. She wept for that. Money? Ha! Not what she came here for. Don't ask anyone at Wellesley. They don't know. They were born in money. They can only see in money. Well, I was born in brick, but I can see the sky from the top of this rock right here. They call it that, top of the rock. Mm, they should call it Tower of Babel. You need to see the sky with your feet in the dirt, up to your knees in the surf. Yeah, yeah, good. I'll check out the Hudson River while I'm up there. Look, why do you care? Why are you preaching to me? It's been 15 minutes now, hasn't it? Hasn't it been 15 minutes? Don't ask me. You're the one who swallowed a clock. Okay, never mind. Just one last question, and then I'll leave you alone. That picture of the girl in the shawl, the great-grandma. Yeah? Is her nose a real nose like the one you used to have? Is it the same nose? Yeah, it is. So? Attractive woman, I'll bet. Full of something. The nose always tells you how much a person has to give. Still there. You can cut it off, but it's still there. Great. Thanks. One last question for you. That daughter of yours, the unhappy one? Yeah. Where is she? Gone. The ugly pulled her in. She got bent all right. Decided to hate herself. Absolutely. You, you couldn't stop it? Pride. Sometimes you lose one, no matter what you do. My mother lost one. My nana lost two. I couldn't, I couldn't bear that. I couldn't possibly bear to lose a child. I'd, I'd rather not have any. You can bear. You'll find out what you can bear. But not by hiding behind money. Not by marrying a guy who doesn't even want children. How did you know that about Granville? It's written all over you, dear. Come on, I couldn't stop this elevator all by myself. There's people waiting to be. There's you waiting to be. That weighs. No wonder you were wobbling along on those four-inch heels. <laughs> You're too smart. If there's something else you know, you'd better tell it. Why'd you follow me in from the sidewalk? <laughs> Say it straight. You look like her. With the nose or without the nose? The whole of you. What was spilling out of you when you passed me was her. I followed. I had to. Today's her birthday. On her birthday, I walk for her. <laughs> this city makes you walk straight lines. But my natural direction's a circle, a ripple in a pond. I'm sorry. About your daughter, I mean. Thank you. How's the bladder? It's hollering. How's yours? Eight children. Want a homemade pinoli cookie to take your mind off it? No? Tell you what. 
Push the down button. Push L for lobby. I'll bet the thing goes. Hey, it's going. <laughs> I figured the stars. What do we do next? Go up a different one? You know the answer to that. Where are you going from here? Where were you going with your picnic? Penn Station. Wanna come? <laughs> to take a train? Where? To see the beach, feet in the sand. Today of all days, like you said. Hey, how about Southhold? There's beach there, figs too. Long ride. For my nana, long ride. Three weeks in steerage. A line for the toilet, she told me. That was the worst part. Don't say it's toilet. Oh, I gotta go now, too. The fig man's a mile from the train station. We walk. In these stilts? No stilts, dear. Feet. Once you're on the bare ground, it's feet. <laughs> We're here. Same lobby. Coming? Almost the same. Yeah, coming. Hello. It's me, Mike. I know it's you. Anything wrong? You weren't even going to call me to say happy anniversary? Uh, our anniversary is in December, Deb. Not our beginning anniversary. Well, what anniversary? Our ending anniversary? Our separation anniversary. Okay. Separation. Huh. A year has gone by already. Boy, what well, can happen in a year? I'll say. <laughs> Okay. Happy anniversary, Deb. What's so happy about it? Okay, then unhappy anniversary. There you go, negative. Right off the bat, you've got to be negative. I am just trying to find the right thing to say that you will let me. Hey, it's not me that's hard to talk to. It's you. Deb, I'm at peace right now, okay? No bad thoughts. I'm sitting on my nice comfy chair by the window, looking up at the trees. The birds are happy. I'm happy. Right. Concern yourself with the bird's feelings, not my feelings. What? No answer to that? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think up the right sentence. Here, are you sitting on your nice comfy chair? I'm sitting in my car. Oh, well, then drive careful. No, 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 wait, I know, I know you always drive careful. Here, I think it's nice that you call me up once in a while to see how I am. I heard you got hurt. I did. I fell. How far? Well, far enough, but the fall wasn't the worst of it. No? What? I landed in poison ivy. Oh my god, bad? You know, you know how bad I get it. I actually rolled in it. Oh, don't scratch it. Were you rock climbing again? I told you, skip the rock climbing. I didn't fall off rocks. I fell off a zip line. Are you not? Oh, wait, I know. The girlfriend. You don't know. Yes, yes, I know. She's young, and so you have to do idiotic things to prove how young you are. No. Life has a beginning, a middle, and end. That much I understand. Yeah? I keep waiting to hear that you had a heart attack in bed with that one, which hmm. would serve you right. Thank you. In bed, I'm, I'm a, a parody of myself if it makes you feel any better, even out of bed. You know, you get old enough and you realize how stupid some of your desires are. Wow, you're philosophical today, Mike. 
a terrible itchy rash can make anyone philosophical. Okay, remember that next time some juvenile says zip line to you. Hey, the girlfriend I had before this was older. Why couldn't you have just left that relationship alone? I was watching out for you, that's all. Well, what's the deal? She fell for you and it flattered you. Someone falling for me doesn't tell me a thing about myself. And it wasn't really your business to confront that poor woman in the supermarket, Deb. Well, that poor woman wasn't going to leave her husband for you. I got that out of her in the first five minutes. I already knew that. Being friends, that's all she had the nerve for. So, a friend I could meet for breakfast, someone I could talk to. Me you can't talk to? I'm talking now, aren't I? So, how's your friend? Gunther? We broke up and you know that damn well. Hmm. How would I know it? Oh, come off it. Don't pretend the ins and outs of my little love affair don't fascinate you. <laughs> That's a pretty strong word. Fascinate? <laughs> well, but okay. A woman who runs off with her shrink, who in fact was her husband's shrink before that. I did not run off. I walked off. And you were supposed to stop me. You were supposed to come after me. And you didn't. After all those years together. Hey. I told you to give it one more try. I tried very hard to persuade you. But actually, you wanted me to leave. Admit it. Well? All right, I do admit it, if you got to have those words. There, I knew it. Let me do the leaving, not you. Heaven forbid. Oh, I have these crazy ideas about gallantry. Yeah, crazy is right. I didn't know you and Gunther broke up. How come? He told me I was self-centered and defensive. Well, that's not awful. Lots of people are. It is awful. How am I defensive? I'm not defensive. You're the defensive one. Okay, if you say so. He said I have no sense of people's boundaries, and I like to talk to hear my own voice, which is why I ask and answer my own questions. I, he said I was narcissistic. Well, if that's the definition, then he's narcissistic. It's me we're talking about here. Sorry. Sorry. And oppositional. He said I was oppositional. Well, being agreeable isn't the only good quality a person can have. Yes, it is. Okay, it is. The only good quality. Says who? Loyalty isn't a good quality? Caring isn't? All right, all right. Deb, I, you deserve a much better shrink. That's all I'm going to say. Gunther happens to be a very good shrink. He had you right on the nose. He said you want too much from life, and that's what your problem is. That's what my problem is? Now he figures it out? <laughs> Wait a minute, let me think that over. And that accounts for your grandiosity, he said. Grandiosity? Wait, wait slow down. I'm still thinking over I want too much from life. Well, you do, and that's why you and I split up, according to Gunther. And according to you, too? You left me because I wanted too much out of life? I left because I couldn't stand anymore feeling like a constant disappointment. <laughs> Count yourself lucky, Mike. Some women don't leave, they poison. Hey, you didn't wish this on me, did you? Because this itching has me right on the edge of losing my mind. You better not be scratching. I'd feel a lot better if you told me you left because you were just plain unhappy. Like in yourself. Like how everyone gets eventually. Well, I was unhappy because you were unhappy and that made me unhappy. I'm not going to say it any different. Oh, it couldn't be the other way around. It couldn't because I don't want too much from life. I'm not a romantic. I don't need love to be my religion. Holy cow. Did that sentence just come out of you? Oh, I got your interest now, huh? No, not out of me. Out of Gunther. May I ask you something I've been trying not to ask? Isn't it pretty damn unethical of Gunther to talk about a patient to another patient? I mean, boundaries, right? I was not just a patient. I was his girlfriend. Well, isn't it pretty damn unethical to make a, a patient of his a girlfriend? Oh, you're not going to get petty now, are you? Okay. No, no, I'm not. You know what it is I want that's too much? To be happy. I think life should be happy. I always saw that as a pretty manageable goal. You don't think so? I think you should take what you're given and don't reach for too much. And that's my grandiosity? <laughs> okay, tell me, were your parents happy together? No. Were yours? Yes. And so what? 
did you manage to be happy with, with your young one and your old one? Huh, answer me that. No. You failed. You with the happy parents. Yes, I failed. <laughs> Here, I'm going to tell you in a nutshell what I learned this past year. If you act out of insincerity, there comes a consequence that you deserve. And delusional thinking is the same as insincerity. You lost me. It's just my fancy way of saying I'm sometimes full of shit. Well, I knew that. <laughs> and what's the consequence? Poison ivy is the consequence. You deserve the poison ivy? Yes, because in the world I want, trying to be something you're not throws the horizon out of level. Trying to make the world give you more than it can give you, same thing. If you, if you can't be happy hearing the birds sing, you have to fall. That's my grandiosity. Get it? Yes, I, I get it. I, I did live with you a long time, after all. <laughs> my world is moral. Gunther's isn't. I'm a serious guy. I know. I know. That's exactly what I told him. I even told him I admired that in you. You did? Yes. See, I learned something too this year. I learned that I don't need much to be happy. If I don't get a compliment, I can give myself one. Hmm. Good. Yes, good. And I learned that serious isn't a bad thing. In fact, I'm serious. Hmm. And Gunther told you you'd be wrong to be thinking that way, of course. Of course. And I told him he was wrong. And he told me I was being oppositional. And I told him he was being defensive. The end. I got dropped like a hot cucumber. You mean a hot potato? A hot anything. Deb, you stood up for me? Well, didn't I say loyalty? D didn't I say that word before? Yes. And let me say something. I was lucky to have what I had with you. Well, well, I knew that. And I know you'll never have it with that young one. I'll bet you every penny I have. How are you so sure? Because she's done with you already, yes? She hasn't been to visit you once since you fell. How do you know? Because I checked. I mean, I, I heard you got hurt, and I started driving by your place four or five times a day. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? I worry about you more than you deserve. Are you putting calamine lotion? Yes, I, I, I was. I ran out this morning. Well, do you want a new bottle, like, like quick? Quick? Where the hell are you? <laughs> look! Look out the window! I'm right here! I'm the crazy person waving from the parked car! <laughs> my God, my God! I'll go get the lotion and bring it back and put it in your mailbox. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to come in? I want you to think about it first, because you've got to get over a year of not wanting me at your door. I do think about it. Good. Think some more. Sit by the window and think. Deb, I, I don't know what to say. Say, happy anniversary. Wow. Happy anniversary. Say, come back tomorrow, Deb. Okay, I will. Say, next time I'll call you, Deb. Yes, do that. And don't scratch. <laughs>